we're going to look at some of the things that you may find useful when it comes to teaching this unit 4.6 all about animation. All the skills and the knowledge you may need detailed. First thing I'd look at um, inside the knowledge organiser. When you see this it tells you in a nutshell what you're hoping to achieve with your pupils over the course of the lessons also shows you which tool you'll need to familiarise yourself with and your pupils, some of the key vocabulary that's going to crop up and also some of the images that you will encounter when you go into the To Animate tool itself. A few questions and answers there just to get you up to speed quickly. To that, somewhere else you may like to go, is the Prior and Future Learning links. This in one A4 piece of paper shows you what it is you're going to be doing but also shows you what you might expect the children have had experience of prior to coming to this year four unit. You may just want to go back and revise a few aspects of creating animated stories, reminding the children what an animation actually is and how you can build it up and be thinking about the building up of backgrounds, foregrounds, various different characters and how they're going to interact with each other. It's also nice to know that you can mash things together by creating pictures using the to paint a picture and that can also be used in any other areas. Plus you can use um, the music tools. You can create bits of music that you may like to add into your animation at some point as well but that's going quite a lot further on. So we've got those two useful bits that you might want to look at to begin with. Then what I'd be inclined to do perhaps, we have these wonderful quizzes, you could go back to those units that we mentioned before, the unit 1.6 animated stories and just look at the quiz. This is a nice way of revising things with the pupils, just launch it, put it onto the big board. Unit 1.6 is about animated storybooks. Use this quiz to see how much you know. Just what play. is an e-book? These little buttons here would allow the children, if they were doing it independently, to be able to just know what is said. Um, but basically just go along. An e-book is a book that you read on an electronic device. Check. Yeah, brilliant. We know we've done the first one correctly. Move on to the next question. Tick the boxes to show the differences between animated storybooks and traditional paper books. The first one is done for you. There we go. Again. And it enters all of the information here. As I said, this could just be done with the whole class. Um, as a sort of discussion as to what these things were, just to remind them all about it. Or you could get the children to do it independently and then all of the information would end up. Let's just show you out here in our data handling area, under scores, under two quiz. And that's quite a nice way of seeing where pupils are actually at. You've got your proof, you've got your information will be stored away inside there. Any quiz on Purple Mash is marked by the system and the details stored behind here. So you might choose to do that. Let's just go back to where we were. Um, we were inside our computing scheme of work and we were looking at year one and the 1.6. So you could look at that and you could look at the knowledge organiser in there as well if you wanted to, to do a similar sort of thing, just saying, OK, so do we know all about this? And again, the key vocabulary that you had previously. The other place you could also go just to be able to remind your pupils of where they're up to is to the unit in year two and that one is 2.6 creating pictures as we saw on that uh, prior and future learning links before. Again you could do the quiz just so that you can bring the children up to speed, remind them of things that they've done before, look at the knowledge organiser and if you feel that you want to just do a few of the activities again. Then when you know that the children have got all the background knowledge that they need Go into your year four, into the 
4.6 animation. Some schools decide that they're going to do the quiz at the beginning and then the quiz at the end of a unit and that would hopefully show some sort of progression that some learning had been achieved. So that would be quite handy but again you could do it as a whole class rather than having them do it individually. A nice mind map here as well. If I just open it up you'll be able to see that the children can add extra bits to it if they do it in groups or you could just use it as a sort of show and tell bit on the screen just as little prompts so we can find out what do we know and then we can add extra bits to it once we have the understanding. That can actually be used collaboratively so you can have more than one person writing on the uh, sheet of paper, the virtual sheet of paper at any one given time. What we see in here then is that we have our lesson plans. We've got our lesson plans here and they work in conjunction with the slide shows. There's only three lessons in unit 4.6 but that doesn't mean that you would teach everything in just three lessons. You may want to spread it out um, over the course of time, make it match in with some topics that you might happen to be doing. Any resources that are mentioned are already here but as you'll see if we go into the to animate itself there are lots of examples that you can be showing the children and you could have a look at those yourself before you actually set about trying to work out how to animate works. I'm going to show you that but as I say you can always revisit that or use it for your pupils. I'm back in my 4.6 if I just open up the lesson plan. In the first lesson what we're looking at is just animating an object. Aims, success criteria, always there. And then it's suggesting resources that you want to collect together. You want to make sure that you have got pencil and paper activities. You can do this just with two pieces of paper to make a very basic flick book. If you use the PowerPoints, just go down and find our PowerPoint lesson one and I'll drag that across so you can see it. We have got here lesson one everything is editable. Just to print that out, to point that out rather. You always have the aims and the success criteria as the first two slides. They're referred to by the lesson plan itself but these are just as an aid. You don't have to follow them word for word. What it does is then tell you any vocabulary that's new in this particular lesson and guides you through all the bits we were just talking about, being able to make things step by step using drawing and then how we would progress to be able to make something that's slightly more sophisticated in the way of an animation. So you use these on the board referring to your lesson notes as you go along. As you can see in here it's telling us what we'd like the children to do, work out the number of pictures needed, create a simple drawn animation using the post-its. So it's like the things we always used to do in the corner of books where you'd have a, a man, sort of a stick man just moving along. It's very, very easy. You can even um, print things out. I've done that in the past where you have a, a printed image and uh, they're identical. The only thing you do is change some colours on them maybe. So you could have a clown's face and it looks like the nose is flashing when you just move the pages backwards and forwards quickly. Loads and loads of ideas you'll find out there um, on the internet. But the children find it really interesting. Another one that you could also try is a, a sort of old fashioned Victorian toy. Um, I shall have a quick look and see if I can find an example of that for you. The example here being uh, the one that everyone probably remembers. You draw an empty goldfish bowl on one piece of paper and then put a goldfish on the other side then sandwich it between a pencil or a straw and you're looking at the optical illusion 
of uh, when you twist it very fast it looks like the fish are actually inside the bowl. A very very simple animation idea there. Children come up with all sorts of amazing ideas I have to say. But if you go all the way through it suggests to you various things that you can try with your pupils. We don't actually get on to anything to do with the to animate itself really um, majorly until we get to the next lesson. Just have a quick look and see what it says here. Drawn animation using post-it notes and there's loads of places you can find examples, places like YouTube if you can. And then if you open it on your device you then ask the children to do that and just do a simple face animation. Let's have a quick look at that. Really really simple to be able to do. I go into here I have got my to animate and I can very easily open up just launch and if I want to make a face I can do that. I've got various different tools down the side here. If I wanted to make a really good face, very round, not true when you think about it. But there you go. And what I'm going to do is give this person some eyes and a smile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on the next page, but I'm going to again a circle and I can put two eyes in make an unhappy face and now if I play very short but we can see it appears to move it's very very basic we can speed it up and we can slow it down this is our frame rate increasing on the top here. I could just pause it, stop it. Handy thing about all of these tools, of course, is that there is a video guide in the top corner here so that you can play to show your pupils how to animate works. We're going to use to animate to make an animation. And when you start to animate, you can see all the pens on the side here. I can press this button to scroll through all the different colours. So it goes down into even more details, which I'm going to go through a little bit for you just now. We can, of course, remove frames. I can remove that one as well. And I can add more frames in either by clicking on here or clicking on this button at the top here. So you let the children have a little play around, let them explore what it can actually do. Just very simple, either using these tools or just restricting them maybe to using felt tips around the front here. Let them see what works and what doesn't work. Looking back again at the actual lesson plan, it's suggesting that you give the children free time to have a look and uh, create an animation themselves, perhaps one that's linked to a current topic. And then in our extension activity, we want to see how we can change things a little bit, make it look like it's going a little slower, perhaps, um, the appearance of a pause. Let's have a look and see how that works. So I'm inside my to animate. If I just create something on here, let's again, we'll make a face. That'll do. So I'll create my face and I'll put some eyes and I'll put a mouth on. What I can do is I can now, because I couldn't make that exactly the same on the next slide, I can drag it and drop it across to the next one. I can then use my eraser And I could create an unhappy face. So when it runs now, it's going to run more smoothly. But we haven't got enough information there really. It's going far too quickly. So I'm just going to pause it. I'll stop it. 
And what I can do then is I can just drag and drop and drag and drop. I can add more. I can drag this one from the very front and add it. Simple dragging and dropping. What happens if I do that? How many frames have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll do one more. We'll do just so we can see the effect that's caused. A lot less jumpy than it was before. In lesson two, we're looking at the tools. We're learning about the onion skinning in animation and how to add backgrounds and sounds too. So the children should know what an onion skin does and they should also be able to select the backgrounds and sounds to make their animations far more engaging. On here it suggests that you can look at an example that we have, squashing the Play-Doh. That's actually in the folder. But let's just have a quick look through. New vocabulary, anything that's there is actually on your slideshow. It talks about the squashing the Play-Doh example. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then the process of onion skinning. Onion skins come about really from how people hand drew animations to begin with and how it's a bit like a piece of tracing paper that goes over the top of a drawing. So you can make everything exactly the same apart from one or two changes. I'll show you how that works in R2 Animate. So use the tool to create a moving ball animation. So let's just go and have a look at that one as well. So I'm going to start a new project and what I'm now looking at is creating a bouncing ball so we'll have that one we'll make it just a bit bigger and I've got my bouncing ball what I want to do is make it appear to move across the page when we go to my next one I've got no idea where the ball was and I could put it here and then I can go on to the next one and I can put it there and I can go on the next one and I can put it over here I can play yeah it's not too bad but what we can do I just remove those is make it look even more professional I'll just add a few more in again by making use of the onion skin that's hidden behind here You'll be able to see when I click on here, when I go to my next slide, I have a sort of ghost of the previous one. And it's a bit like Peter Pan and his shadow. You always want them to be overlapping. So I go to my next one, make them overlap, make it overlap again. And one more will do. There. So now when we play, it moves far more smoothly across the screen we can see exactly where we have been and then move forwards from it. If we wanted to look at the example that they were talking about, that's the squashing play-doh, just launch here. We can see the various different slides that are required to make this animation happen helps with the children actually have drawn things out on a storyboard to begin with as well. That's where the sort of creating animated books and everything would come in I suppose. But you'll find inside 2Publish and 2Publish Plus in the tool area that there are lots of storyboarding templates ready for you. Back inside our 2Animate. We already know that we can switch on the onion skin we know that we can create objects very easily. Let's just put my bouncing ball back on again. One, two, three, four. What's quite nice with this is, I mean, I've uh, sort of extension activities I've given children. When it hits the wall, what happens? It could actually change color and change direction each time. You could have two different colors approaching from opposite walls and when they meet in the middle they mix 
So you could have a sort of a red and a yellow creating an orange and then making it look like it explodes. Quite often with animation people try to go too far too fast and they don't really understand the principles. They think they can go straight from nothing to being able to do Nick Parks, Wallace and Gromit. Uh, unfortunately that's not doable. So what we want to do with this one now is to put a background on. I'll go back to my first slide. Put a background on, you can just click. You could, if you have something like an iPad, take a picture. It could be the classroom, it could be the school field, um, anything that you would like. You can draw your own if you wish to, but there's loads and loads of different images that you can select here too. Quite handy stuff. So what shall we have? We'll just have it going past the Colosseum, we'll do fine. Then it gives you the option. Do you want it just on this frame? Or do you want it on all of them? Well, we'll stick it on all of them because that'll make everything seem seamless. And we'll play again and see what's going on. It goes flying across in front of the Colosseum. What you want the children to do is to see what it might look like if you were just to go and change a background, perhaps part way through. Um, We'll make this one fairly obvious what it's like. Do we want it for all of them or just that one frame? Mm, got it for all of them. Let's choose one where we can make it for just one frame. We'll say just this frame. OK. And then what happens when we play? Oh, that's a bit strange, but it might be something that you can incorporate into your ideas a little later. But you can see how it actually works. So we've managed to do a simple stop frame animation with a set background but with an object appearing to move within it. The other thing you can also do is add sounds. If I click on the little sound button here there are lots already within your purple mash. I'm going to have one game sounds that'll do and if I want to add it I just click and we can see now that this sound is going to appear on this slide and this slide only. Let's play. Now that's interesting. Because the sound is that long it's going across all of our slides. So what we could do if we wanted to is we could just add a few in as they did previously where they were doing the pause. So what I'm going to do is just drag this one across to here and I'm going to take the sound off that one and I'm going to drag it across again to do that pause we were talking about earlier. Maybe that's going to give you enough time to actually play for that particular bit. See the effect that it's having. There's so much that can be done on here just to play around with it. You could then go on to one of the other ones. You can add different sounds as it's coming along. You can create your own just by clicking record so it can be your voice or they could be making some sort of sound effects. That could be another lesson in itself using coconut shells as a click clop sounds or um, scrunching of paper to sound like people walking on snow or on gravel. So the whole thing is a complete topic in itself considering how you're going to do every different element to make your particular animation more engaging and to get people to want to watch it. As we can see now in our lesson, what the children are going to try and do is to create a dancing stick man and include a background, some sound and some animations to make the ball appear to glitter. So challenging them to use all those different tools and ideas they've come across so far. Stop motion animation is the third lesson and that's the one that people tend to think of as being the sort of Nick Parks, Wallace and Gromit morph. Um, doesn't always have to be clay. It doesn't always have to be three dimensional. You can have things um, flat on, uh, on a table 
um, so it could be pencil and paper drawings that have then got um, pins through the joints so that you can easily move them around. You don't even have to go that sophisticated. I've just used things like pens and erasers and that sort of stuff on the desk, get them just to move around. Let's show you how that works within the tool itself. I'll go back into the two animate. Again, there are lots of examples down there, but let's see how it works from the beginning. You would, in this uh, situation, use the camera. I'm going to have to be a little bit creative here because I'm working with a desktop which has a webcam on it. If you have something like a iPad, you could prop it up so that it's always looking at the right place. Let's have a quick look and see what the camera can see. Oh, it can see me a little bit in the background, but let's just see if we can focus it even further just on a bit of the table. This is our stage. And what we want to do is to get things to move around on this stage and it just makes it so that the children hopefully are going to start to understand what it's all about. So I have my pencil and I have my pen and I have my eraser. Now all I have to do is not move anything other than those particular characters as I'm going through. So let's see. Click. That's made our first one. I'm going to just move the rubber a little. I'm going to move the pencil a little. And I'm going to move my pen a little. And then I've got the next frame got my camera click next frame move a little move a little move a little click next frame camera move a little, move a little, move a little, click. For now let's see what happens if I play that particular bit of animation. You see they appear to move around by themselves. You can also see me in the background which isn't good but it's a good teaching point. See we've got a little red dot on one of them so you'd have to go back and clean it up. i sure which one that's actually on. Oh it's on that one. Can we actually just erase that? There we go. Remove that bit. You see just using inanimate objects but making them appear to move by themselves by using that camera bit. So looking back in the computing scheme of work lesson plans for unit 4.6 animation it does take you right the way through for your medium term plans what's going to be happening on each of the different lessons so here's your success criteria aims success criteria that's quite helpful just as a one page to have with you while you're looking at the pupils work takes you through the various different lessons as we've seen with all the resources and the activities. But then right down at the very bottom the assessment guidance. This is the overview for the year four and for this unit. What we're looking at in this unit. Not mixing it in with all the other things with the code and spreadsheets and sound and whatnot. This is what you're looking at. And the vast majority of your pupils will be at this level. Some won't have got quite that far and some will have exceeded your expectations and just be little Steven Spielbergs in the making, the next Nick Parks. All you need to do is make a note of these children and these children and by omission everybody else is going to be here. 
that's your animation and all the bits and pieces that are there to support you in your teaching of it. You can use it through so many different topic areas. You could use it in your science for uh, looking at the life cycles of plants and animals. You can use it in your history. You could use it in your geography, looking perhaps at uh, volcanoes and their eruptions. So much. The children have fantastic imaginations. They will come up with incredible ideas. So, happy animating. <laughs>